Good evening. Good evening. Good Welcome evening. to Bible study Yay. here at Psalm 91 Ministries. Praise God. Thank you. So glad to be in the place tonight. Amen. 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 Um, I've been asked to start out. Amen. Bible study with prayer. Amen. Amen. So let's go right into it so we can dive into this word, this, this good word. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this another day, God. We thank yes. you, Lord, for bringing us together collectively. God, we want accord. Father, we ask that you bless Pastor John as he divides the word for us, goes into the word to help us understand it, to get a better understanding of what it is that you have for us. Yes. Father, I ask that you help open our hearts and our minds to you, God, that you may plant what you need to, um, planted, and that you... Uh, bless us to water and, and help it, and you, of course, grow it, because you give the increase. Yes, God. God. I ask that you bless each and every person with us today, and that they will receive from you, in Jesus' mighty and matchless name. Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well, praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We talked about on Sunday, let everything, everything. that has breath. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. In our highs and in our lows and our ups and in our downs. Yes. Hallelujah. We give God praise. We give him glory. We give him honor. And so we are just so blessed to be in the in the place again tonight. Listen, if you're, if you're on your way, we just pray your uh, Godspeed, um, that God bring you here safely yes. and soundly. If you're watching via the live, look, we just want you, we want to remind you that this is a, our Bible studies are, are more of a dialogue, right? Not yes. a monologue. So I, I, I want you to be able to talk back to me. Yes. So if there's something that is said that you have questions about, you know, feel free to fire the questions away. Now, we cannot, I cannot, just because I'm not all-knowing, I can't promise that I'll have all the answers all the time. Um, as much as I've, uh, I've studied, there's, there's things that we're, you know, we still got to um, learn, right? And that's part yes. of what this is about, is, is rightly dividing the word of truth and dissecting yes. the word yes. so that we can all um, take it in, so we can all um, uh, appreciate the word and gather the word in. So what I'm going to suggest that you do, right, which is what I'm doing right now, is actually share, uh, share this, this, this live. So, um, good evening. Good evening, Pastor Morton. Pastor Linda watching with us. Praise God. Praise God. It's always a pleasure to have you uh, in the place, you know. <clears throat> and um, uh, um, that's, that's an amazing woman. God is just healing her, uh, Amen. you know, from uh, yes. and recovering from a surgery. That, and God has just been such a blessing to that woman of God. And we thank, thank God for having uh, 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 Pastor Morton and, and, of course, her her husband, uh, Brother Mac, um, <laughs> you know, in our Amen. lives. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And um, so again, this is a this is a dialogue, not a monologue. So I want you guys to um, um, uh, send questions out. So what you can do is you can just put in the chat if you have a question that comes up. Now we are discussing tonight. We're discussing chapters 18 and 19 um, of Genesis. Now, we know that Genesis means the beginning, so it's the beginning, the book of beginnings. And so there's got a lot we're going to try to pull out of here. Hopefully, we'll be able to get through both chapter 18 and 19, but at most, or at least we will, uh, I, I believe we'll be able to get through, you know, Lord willing, we'll be able to get through chapter 18. There's so much here for us to unpack. I want to start off because uh, I would like, I always like to spend at least five, five or ten minutes, you know, five you know, 10 minutes at the max talking about if we have any questions from our ser Sunday service and from the lesson on Sunday. And the, the who can remember what the lesson was, what the title of the lesson was? There, It, it was titled after a commercial, a credit card commercial. No. What's in your What's worship? What's in your worship? What's in your worship? Yeah, he's like, I had it too. <laughs> amen, amen. What's in your worship? What's in your worship? And we talked about that. Do we remember what text we came from in talking about our worship? Mm. Or who the figures were? Who were the individuals we talked about? David. David. We spoke about David, King David. Um, Dave, King David, when, when he said, I want to bring the Ark of the Covenant back to Israel. And, um, and the Bible says he, that when, they, when he got it back, 
uh, because the first time when he tried to bring it in, um, we know that what, what was the what happened the first time they tried to bring the Ark of the Covenant in? They used the cart. They used the cart with who who carried it? So they carried it on a cart, but but what was moving it? Oxen. There was an oxen. Praise God. Amen. And um, why was this wrong? It was supposed to be the Levites who was to uh, carry. Amen. The Levites were supposed to carry the Ark of the Covenant. And so... Um, you, I think you kind of provided a little perspective, too, because I don't remember what enemy had the Ark, but they sent it to Israel on the cart with the oxen. Amen. And so instead of doing what they knew they were supposed to, they just went on and kept the oxen with the cart. They just continued it. So. Amen. Amen. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Lady Kim. That's awesome. Um, so so what, what she was bringing up is how the Philistines, it was the Philistines, Philistines who okay. had, um, and, uh, and when, when Samuel was coming into his own as a prophet, the Philistines had taken the Ark of the Covenant, but it was really God who had delivered it into the hands of the Philistines because yes. he was showing a point uh, about Israel that Israel was not appreciating the presence of God. So God says, if you don't appreciate me, then I'm gone. And there's a principle in that. You know, whatever you don't appreciate, you'll lose. Yeah. Right? Whatever we don't appreciate, we lose. So so there was a principle God was showing in that. And that and the Ark of the Covenant stayed with uh it stayed with between the Philistines and a man by the name of uh Abinadad. Abinadad stayed with him for over twenty years through the whole reign of King Saul. So think about that. The whole time, it was outside wow. of Israel. It was in part of Israel, but it was outside of the, 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 the capital of Israel. Wow. Under King Saul, and he never thought, let me bring the presence of the God here. And, and we got to be careful when people uh, um, are cavalier about the presence of God. Yes. When, yes. when, when, we're, when, we're, when we are too loose around the presence of God, even around the things of God, all right? And so um, um, anything else that we, that we want to touch on before we jump into? Yes. Then they had the incident where a man was killed. Come on, talk about it. Because they used the oxen and, and it fell. It was falling. The man reached out to try to prevent other people from getting hurt and he was killed. The man tried to prevent others from being hurt, so he was killed. And he, was, he wasn't killed because it crushed him. He was killed because God took his life away. Yes. Right. Now, what was God trying to relate to the children of Israel by doing that? Because remember, David got angry with God. Mm -hmm. And then after he got angry, he got scared. <laughs> he got angry and then reverent. Because remember the principle, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yes. And so many times nowadays we get so cavalier with the things of God that we can we can get so casual and cavalier with the things of God that we lose reverence. Yes. yes. So so what was God trying to communicate to Israel? Because the guy, he was trying to help. Exactly. Like he, he didn't do anything wrong in our sense and, and from a natural sense. He didn't do anything wrong. That's why David gets upset. But go ahead. Well, um, in a way, it's like you God has standards, you know, and his his rules. It doesn't matter necessarily what your intentions are. His way is the way, and so you can't, you know, um, we we can't just take it for granted and say, oh well, but we mean well, you know. But you knew, you know what you're supposed to do, which is why. If in that chapter, God didn't, I don't believe God even told him um, what the, the, the rule was, the standard was at, in that chapter, you know. So David knew because when David did go to, you know, to bring it the right way, he knew, okay, it has to be the Levites, it has to be this, 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 and that. So it's like, okay, well, these were oversights, you know, yes. that, that we yes. kind of choose, we pick and choose what we're going to reverence. Amen. Well, how are we going to reverence? That's good. Um, let me add something to that. Uh, so, David, the lesson here was actually 
more to the leaders yes. of Israel yes. than it was to those around. Right. The lesson is, is that your decisions, right, can be life or death. Wow. So you need to be cautious about making decisions. And as leaders, because look, most leaders will tell you, listen, I want I want I want the thing that we got we got planned for tomorrow done yesterday. Mm -hmm. We're always in a hurry and you know I always relate leaders to the motor of a car. We that's all we do is go. The motor doesn't break. The motor the, the motor just goes. Mm -hmm. That's what the motor does. Yes. Right? And so sometimes as motors, we have to understand we need brakes. Yes. We need brakes. We need somebody to slow us down. Right. And this is why the Bible says that there is safety in wise counsel. There's safety in wise counsel. And so, you know, David may have been so excited and thinking he's not doing such a great thing for God yes. that he thought that he forgot that he was handling holy things. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? Now, holy things are not the same as things that may be, or we say, when we say holy and sacred, let's say put the sacred on there, they're not necessarily the same as anointed, right? And anointing, all of us are anointed. The Bible says as a Christian, the word Christ, Christ means anointed. So when we say Christians, we're saying anointed ones. We're anointed, right? But that's not the same as something that is considered holy or sacred. So when we think of the holiness of God, we think of the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. we, we think of things that are set apart, things that have to be honored, things that have to be revered. Those are the things that are holy. When we think of communion, right? Those are considered sacred and holy. These are more services or things that we use to honor and recognize God. Mm -hmm. Now, we're not to necessarily, especially when it comes to sacred things, we shouldn't worship the sacred thing, mm -hmm. yes. even, yes. Though the, even though the ark was, was probably a little bit different than that because it's actually representing God's presence. So we're not worshiping the box, but we're worshiping what's in the box or yes. who the box is all about. And so it's a really important that we, we um, understand that. Now, um, um, I said 10 minutes and we've gone 12, so let's, uh, let's, let's dive into chapter 19 um, of, of uh, Genesis. So chapter 19, uh, quick review um, of chapter 18. We just came out of chapter 18. What happened in 18? Somebody help me out. What happened in 18? What happened in chapter 18 of, of Genesis? Uh, God called, uh, well, he, he gave him the prom gave Abraham the promise. He gave Abraham the promise. Go ahead. Uh, that he would be the father of many nations. Amen. He gave him the promise that he would be the father of many nations. And last week we went through chapter, hold on, we're in chapter 18, right, today? Yes. I'm sorry, so I meant chapter 17. Chapter 17. 16 and 17, we can say. Um, so, chapter 17, we saw that God established the covenant with Abraham. It was a covenant. God, he says, I will make a covenant with you by which I will guarantee to give you countless descendants. And, um, you know, we, we, we went into great length to talk about that and how the covenant um, um, that... that uh, that um, what do we say? Because we referred to Galatians chapter three verse fifteen. Yes. Um, that there that, that that there is an allegory or there is a, a parallel to the law and grace, mm -hmm. right? Or the or faith. Yes. You know, um, right, righteousness by faith versus righteousness through the law. Mm -hmm. So we talked about that last week. So now let's get into chapter chapter eighteen. All right. Um, Let's see, do I have it on the screen? Let me see if I can pull it on the screen. All right, chapter 18. If somebody could read verses 1 and 2 for us. The Lord appeared again to Abraham near the oak grove belonging to Mamre. One day Abraham was sitting at the entrances to his tent during the hottest part of the day. Hold on, does anyone remember what was in Mamre? 
<laughs> it's all right. In Genesis chapter 13, verse 18. No problem. In Genesis chapter, that's why we call it, that's why we call it Bible study. Genesis chapter 18, verse uh, 13, verse 18. Um, uh, Abraham builds his third altar unto mm -hmm. God in memory. It's um, chapter 13, verse 18. Okay, continue. Verse 2. He looked up and noticed three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he ran to meet them and welcomed them, bowing low to the ground. Okay, so he notices, say, tell me again, what does he notice? Three men. Three men standing nearby. Three men. Three men, okay. Um, what, is, what does three often mean? In our studies of the Bible, what does three often mean? Perfection, right? It, it can mean perfection or completeness. Completion. Completeness, something that's whole, okay. right? You know, three, you know. Um, anything else? Yes. <laughs> Um, um, what's interesting to me as we read that verse what stands out to you when we read now we are for those that are watching via live we're reading from the New Living Translation okay um, read verse 2 again he looked up and noticed three men standing nearby when he saw them he ran to meet them and welcomed them bowing low to the ground so what stands out to you? Anything. Anything that stands out. He looked up. He looked up. Yes. Yeah, that's good. Uh, he looked up. So so he's at, now note in verse 1, he is at the entrance. I want you to remind, if you're using a, a paper Bible, highlight the word, the entrance of the tent. Right? Because it's going to be important for chapter 19. Right? The, the second thing we notice is that he is uh, approached by three men. So let's put the picture up of these three visitors. Right? <clears throat> So he is approached by three men, and immediately when he sees them, he runs to meet them and welcome them, and then he begins to bow, the Bible says, low to the ground. Now you got to understand that Abraham is a very wealthy and well-known man. Mm -hmm. So what is it about these three that immediately, immediately make him give um, obeisance, that's or another word, form of worship to these, to these individuals? Yes. They could be angels. They could be angels. They could be angels. Now, go ahead. Um, well, also it says that the, the Lord appeared again to Abraham. So, and then he looked up. So when it says the Lord appeared, it's referring to the three men, right? It refers to, we'll see. Well, okay. We'll see. Because I'm going to ask you, the, my next question is, is this, and don't, don't worry about getting the, if, if don't worry, if I ask you a question, I don't want you to, act, um, to hear questions and think, oh man, I don't want to answer that because I don't want to get it wrong, right? This is, our, this is a process of discovery, right? So, so when I ask you this question, do you think, because what I want to do is I just want us to talk it out. Do you think that these three men are symbolic of the Trinity? Because this is a theory in theology, that these three men are symbolic of the Trinity. Yes. Okay? I, I, yes. Okay. Listen, there are there is a whole group of theologians who believe this. So listen, this is a strong argument that they have. Okay. Um, what is verse three and four? Somebody read third, three and four. Nice and loud. My lord, he said, if it pleases you, stop here for a while. Rest in the shade of this tree while water is brought to wash your feet. Notice what he does. He washes their feet. Hmm. Doesn't this remind you of something that the Lord does? Mm -hmm. He who, you know, uh, when the Bible talks about Jesus, he, you know, he was equal with God, made himself of no reputation, mm -hmm. and became like a man. Thought it not robbery to be equal with God. And what does he do? He comes down here and he washes dirt off of dirt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Think about that. We're made from dirt. He washes dirt off of dirt. Wow. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. So so let's let's continue. <clears throat> and since you've honored your servant with this visit, let me prepare some food to refresh you before you continue on your journey. All right, they said. Do as you have said. All right, now pause. Um, where'd you stop? Verse in five. 
Good. Yes. Oh, thank you. Now, what are two things that we learn about um, uh, Abraham's character just in these few verses? We, one, one of the things that before this, before this chapter, we find that he is a man of great faith at times and he's a man of no faith at other times. Yeah. But there's something else in this chapter that we discover. Talk to me. Yes. Loyalty. Loyalty. That's good. Yes. He's, yes. In. Hospitable. Hospitable. What's another word for hospitable? He serves. serves. Oh, okay. He serves. He's serving. Yes. And he's humble. He and he's be. humble. And he immediately, see, there has to be something about these three strangers where he immediately recognizes them as God. For Abraham, who is a man of great wealth, a man of great stature, a man who is known by kings, mm -hmm. bows down his feet. This is very similar to what he does when he, when he is approached by King Melchizedek, right. the high priest of Salem, before there was a Salem. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Immediately he recognizes this guy and says, here, take 10%. Now you got to realize this. He says, take 10%, not of the spoil yeah. of what I have. Mm, yeah. Not of what we won that I never obtained of what we have. Wow. So Abraham, number one, he knew how to put God first. He says, listen, as soon as he came in contact with God, he says, oh my goodness, I'm a servant. Mm -hmm. And he had no problem with it. Um, um, verse six. So Abraham ran back to the tent and said to Sarah, Harry, Get three large measures of your best flour, knead it into dough, and bake some bread. Okay, your best flour. Notice, he doesn't say just get any bread. Mm -hmm. Hey, get the bread out the cupboard or the tent. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> he says get the best flour. He says when you go to the kitchen part of the tent, right? <laughs> right, because they set up big tents because they had large families. Yes. He says get the best flour. And like you said, he didn't even say, get the bread that we had already. Right. No, right. he said fresh. Prepare right. the fresh from the best. And, and it's a lesson to us from the father of the faith, mm -hmm. right? From the father of the faith that God teaches us a lesson that he's not perfect, neither are we. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. He says, this man, as soon as he recognizes that God is in the room, he immediately gives obeisance, and that's another word for worship. He immediately, the Bible says, lights down on his face. Yeah. Wow. Many of us have a problem standing up on our feet during praise and worship. Abraham recognizes God and falls down on his face. Yes. Um, now, here's a, here's a quick fact. Um, quick bread can take about two Two hours and 15 minutes to bake. Um, can take about um, two hours and 15 minutes. However, some bread, depending on how it is for fermented, can take up to 62 hours Whoa. to bake. And you got to realize, they did not have ovens like we have today. Right. Yeah. So this is a process. He immediately released everything that he had. He released everything that he had to God. He said, God, whatever you want. And he didn't, he didn't wait for God to say, give me your best. Mm -hmm. He gave his best. As soon as he saw God, he said, God deserves my best. Yes. What does God deserve to you? What is your best? What is your best? And this goes to when we think about giving. And again, we know we don't spend a whole lot of time talking about giving, but we do spend time talking about a heart of generosity and a heart of servitude. And because we live in America, America being a uh, a republic, you know, you know, there's portions of it that it's like the 
concept is a democracy, but we actually live in a republic, right? And because we have a president and not a king, there's a difference in how we view um, our leaders. Yeah. We view our leaders like, you're just like me, you just have a title, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You have a position, right? And so we have to remember that that we that in the kingdom, the kingdom is a king dome or king's dominion, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And he's a king. And so we have to release all of our uh, um, preconceived notions and ideas about what it means to serve in a kingdom, mm -hmm. in a kingdom. And how do we recognize the king when he comes into the, to the building? When he comes into the place. All right. Um, verse 7 and 7, 8, and 9. Then Abraham ran out to the herd and chose a tender calf and gave it to his servant, who quickly prepared it. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, when the food was ready, Abraham took some yogurt and milk and the roasted meat, and he served it to the men. As they ate, Abraham waited on them in the shade of the trees. Where is Sarah, your wife? The visitors asked. She's inside the tent, Abraham replied. Then one of them said, I will return. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Mm -hmm. Pause right there. <laughs> the, they know. <laughs> well, hold on, hold on. Here's some revelation that God just gave me, and I want to share with you. I want you to, I want God to, God's Holy Spirit to jump off of you. So if you get revelation off of this revelation, share it. Notice that Abraham did not have Sarah doing the serving. Right, right. Mm. He served. Wow. He served. And this is a message for men that we should be the chief servants in our house. Wow. See, if he had called Sarah, then he would have been implying that these men and he are equal. Yeah, yeah. Wow. If he had called his servants, he would have been implying culturally that we are on the same page. I get my servants to do this. But he became a servant. Wow. Right? Mm -hmm. He became a servant. And Sarah's in the tent. Sarah is in the tent. Yeah. Um, go ahead, continue reading. Read verse 9 again. Where is Sarah, your wife, the visitors asked. She's inside the tent, Abraham replied. Then one of them said, I will return to you about this tent. Wait, wait, pause, year. pause, pause. Isn't yes. it amazing that God thought about her? He says, he says, where is your wife? Mm -hmm. Why haven't you invited your wife out here to hear from God? Mm. Wow. Mm. And see, this, this is part of when, when we hear people say that the Bible is, se that God is sexist. Mm -hmm. We have to understand that God God was the one looking out for women. Yes. When when Haggai is kicked out, God says, "No, let me let me be your covering." Wow. Right. Right. Remember that? Yeah. Yes. So God was using women the whole way. In fact, the promise for the for the promise was promised to a woman. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's right. So I, I want to I wanna address these things that we're going to hear when we're out in the world. The world says, it says, no, the Bible was sexist. No, the, there were people in the Bible that were sexist, that's for sure. Right? That was culturally, <laughs> yes. that's what the culture was. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I heard somebody making a joke and they were saying, listen, you know, um, you know folks are getting upset because uh, such and such a, a man... Was uh, we found racist letters from such and such a man from 60, 70 years ago. He said, well, understand, the culture was racist 60, 70 years ago. You should be surprised if you don't see a letter from somebody during that time who wasn't racist. So we got to understand the cultural context, yeah. right? But God was always looking out mm -hmm. for women, right? So let's continue. Uh Verse 10 again? Um, or, let's see. Um, yeah, go ahead, verse 10. Then one of them said, I will return to you about this time next year, and your wife Sarah will have a son. Sarah was listening to this conversation from the tent. 
Abraham and Sarah were both very old by this time, and Sarah was long past the age of having children. So she laughed silently to herself and said, how could a worn out woman like me enjoy such pleasure, especially when my master, my husband, is also so old? <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so the, the grown folks in the room will understand what, what she's talking about here. He says, he says, how can she even, she, 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 there is a possibility that she's expressing that she can, she no longer is even functions sexually, right? Mm -hmm. And she says, and he ain't, he ain't working either. <laughs> You gotta listen to what he said. She said. <laughs> she said, "How could a worn out woman like me enjoy such pleasure?" Now listen to what he said. Especially when my master, my husband, is also so old. She didn't just say he's old. She said he is so old. She put him on front street. She put him out on front street for sure. Now, let me see if I have that scripture. I don't know if I did put it up there. So, remember we talked about this. Um, I, want you to, I want you to circle uh, the words that she uses in verse 12. She says, so she laughed silently to herself, and right, and said, mm -hmm. how could a worn out woman like me enjoy such pleasure? Especially when my master, my husband, is also old. Again, culturally, that's how they refer to their husbands, is yeah. Lord. Right? But again, I want you to think about this. Stop looking at it through the prism of 2022 and look at it through the eyes of context, historical context. Yes. So it's, it would be the same as a duke and a duchess. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? The duchess, because she's like the queen. Mm -hmm. So the duchess would refer to the duke as my lord. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So, again, we're speaking kingdom language, not democratic or republic language. Yes. Right? This is, um, so, but the key word there is she said. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to take you back, because we talked about this a little bit last week. Somebody read Genesis 17, verse, uh, Genesis 17, 17. Then Abraham bowed down to the ground. But he laughed to himself in disbelief. How could I become the, a father at the age of 100, he thought. And how could Sarah have a baby when she is 90 years old? He laughed, and what did, but what does it say? He thought. thought. He thought. Uh -huh. Be careful what we... See, see, a lot of thoughts will go through your mind. But... Be careful what you say. Be careful what you say. Make sure that you may have a thought that is contrary to the word of God. Make sure that you don't say it. Mm -hmm. So let's go back. There we go. Um, read verses 13 through 15. Uh, then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? Why did she say, can an old woman like me have a baby? But hold on. She thought this. And the Lord said, why did she laugh? She over there in the tent. Now she's close enough to hear them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Continue. Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return this time next year and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was afraid, so she denied it, saying, I didn't laugh. But the Lord said, no, you did laugh. Listen, no, wait, look, if God tell you this, I'm just saying, okay, God, I did it. My bad. You're right, you're right. You're right, you're right. <laughs> Ain't no point in being like, no, nah, God, I didn't laugh. No, you did it. But listen, again, we can, it's hard for, we, we got to be careful about being quick to judge, right? Being quick to judge. Mm -hmm. You don't know how you respond in, in, in a situation. Like somebody just read your mind. And, and they, they tell you something that's pretty, that may be embarrassing. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about like crazy embarrassing. I'm saying like this is going to make you look bad. Sometimes uh, out of reflex, 
We react a certain way. Mm -hmm. And this is why it's important to get the word of God out in, inside of us, because the more word we get in, in inside of us, the more of that comes out of us in times of challenge or struggle or uh, where our faith is tested. Mm -hmm. All right, um, let's go. Let's get... Uh, read 16 all the way down to 21. Then the men got up from their meal and looked out towards Sodom. As they left, Abraham went with them to send them on their way. Should I hide my plan from Abraham? The Lord asked. For Abraham will certainly become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth will be blessed through him. I have singled him out so that he will direct his sons and their family to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just. Okay, pause. Let's, let's talk about this part where, where God says, shall I hide anything from Abraham? Why do you think, what about Abraham have we discovered where God says, shall I keep a secret from you, Abraham? Mm. I think that goes to what uh, Gabby said, his loyalty. Loyalty? To his family. To his family? Um, yeah, that he would... Um, so, like, back to what you said the other week about uh, the promise being that he would be a, a, a father of nations. And, and had it not been for Isaac, Abraham would have uh, would have probably passed it on to Lot. There you go. Because he took him in as his son. He, he treated him, or he was like the closest thing to a son to Abraham. There you go. He was, he was, like, a, he was like a son. He was his nephew. Yeah. You know, when his brother died, he pretty much raised Lot. Right. There's, there's some characteristics about Abraham. Because remember, this teaching is on, uh, you know, learning faith through the life of Abraham. What was something that was significant about Abraham? What are some of the characteristics about Abraham? He's loyal. You, 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 you just touched on some things. Um, so one of the things that stands out to me is that Abraham, what do we see in this very chapter? He is a servant. He is a worshiper. Mm -hmm. And a giver. Is he in, uh, He's a giver. Mm -hmm. He's a giver. We see that Abraham is a giver. One of, the other things we, one of the other things that we see is that Abraham sets up altars or memorials for God. Meaning he... He makes sure that he doesn't forget what God has done. Mm -hmm. One of the amazing things that we did a couple of years ago, um, I, was, I was over a particular uh, study group, I, can't, I think it was, and, and we had suggested, I suggested that we start prayer journals or a, a, a prayer box, right? Like a, 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 a faith emergency kit. Right. And I said, within this emergency kit, what you want to do is you want to put your favorite song. Maybe it's a CD if you still use CDs. Or maybe it's a scripture. Maybe it's a poem. Maybe it's, it's something that you can pull out when you're going through something. Maybe it's a journal of what God has done for you. Maybe it's an award that you got that you probably didn't deserve. Or he's like, I know that this will only be God. And so it's something. It's like a memorial unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. Have you built your memorial unto the Lord, where every time you come to memory, that's, oh, you remember, oh, God did this. Yeah. You know, maybe we should have that, where every time we go into a particular room or something like this, God gave me the house of my dreams. Mm -hmm. God gave me the man of my dreams. God gave me the woman of my dreams. God gave me the, uh, the job of my dreams. God gave me the business of my dreams. You know, my wife, one time, she reminded me of this principle and how powerful it was. We were sitting and eating. I was going through a low time, and she stopped me. And this was an amazing thing of faith that this woman of God did. She says, she takes out a notebook, and she says, now stop. I want you to list all of the things that God has done for you. And I was like, baby, I don't want to do that. So I don't feel like it. I don't feel like it. I really wanted to be in my phone. I really wanted, I did not, I did not want to hear somebody preach to me. So what she did was she had me preach to me. Mm -hmm. And she said, I want you to write down. She said, don't worry. So I didn't, I, I wasn't trying to participate. She said, so don't worry. You don't even have to write it. I'll write it. And she said, just go. She said, tell me, tell me one thing that God did. Give me, she said, like one or two things. And I saw, listen, I said, oh, God gave me the, okay. 
God did it. Yeah. And by number three, she asked me, I think, five in total. By number three, I felt so bad that I had doubted God. Mm -hmm. Why? Because she, she had made me establish a memorial unto the Lord. I, I was able to take, take inventory for what God had done for me. And sometimes we need to do that. We need to take inventory for what God has done for us. Yes. So on, with the verse, verse 17, where uh, the Lord asked, should I hide my plan from Abraham? One, he already shows that this was already a, a plan that was in motion. And they didn't share with him when they were uh, having dinner or whatever, what the plan was. They were right. just there. They didn't discuss. The Bible doesn't go into what all they were talking about outside of that promise. Um, but does it sound like the Lord even acts that be, in a way kind of like, I don't want to, I don't know if I want Abraham to change my mind. Mm. You know, like when he says, should I hide my plan? What's the need? You're God. Why do you have to hide your, any plan from God? You know, I mean, from Abraham. You know, your word is final. But if because of the characteristics of Abraham, you know, could Abraham have kind of like swayed God or, you know, maybe he considered Abraham's plea or concern because out of his due to his loyalty, you know, for his nephew and all of these things. So I think all of the things you said can be true. Mm -hmm. Yes. Number one, God is setting this up so that so that. Abraham can do what we call the, well, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. Um, and, and two, God, is, <clears throat> God has given us a principle that when we draw close to God, God says, no good thing shall I withhold from thee. He says, I will give you secrets. I will open up. I will go open up revelation and insight that the world does not know to you because you draw close to me. Remember the Bible says, draw close to me and I'll draw close to you. What does that mean? If we're close to each other, but we ain't talking. Mm -hmm. That means draw close to me. That means let's have a conversation. He says, the more you draw close to me, the more I'm going to get closer to you. And that's an amazing thing. That, the, that God says, if you, if you, do you realize that cuts the time in half that it would take to get, if God was across the room, and because he's walking at the same pace that we're walking towards us, each other, mm -hmm. that cuts the time in half. Mm -hmm. So I need to start walking towards God. I need to start walking towards God. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord, Pastor Angela. Praise the Lord. Thanks for joining. I um, think it also shows God's character. Because he, doesn't have to, he didn't have to say that, but he wanted us to get a glimpse, I think, of him. And the things that he considers when it comes to us. I love that. Love that. Um, where, where do we end off? Verse 19. Um, finish verse 19 and uh, through 21. Then I will do for Abraham all that I have promised. So the Lord told Abraham, I have heard a great outcry from Sodom and Gomorrah because the, their sin is so flagrant. I am going down to see if their actions are as wicked as I have heard. If not, I want to know. Now, God is what, what there's a, a term called um, omnipotent. That means all powerful. And God is also omnipresent. Omnipresent. And that means he's all, he's everywhere at the same time. Mm -hmm. So why does God have to come down? To see it for himself. Are there sins so? Is it one of those things where because it's the place is so wicked that uh, God doesn't abide there, or or the sin can't be in the presence of of God? Not that He can't be in their presence. Um, <clears throat> could be. I think we're going to unpack that a little bit in a few more, more verses. Could be. That's a good point. Go ahead. Um, let's 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 let me give you a reference verse. Genesis chapter eleven. Let me see. Do I have it up here? Genesis chapter eleven. 
verses 5 through 7. And it reads, uh, But the Lord came down to look at the city and the tower the people were building. Right? Mm -hmm. Look, he said, the people are united and they all speak the same language. After this, nothing set, nothing they set out to do will be impossible for them. Come, let's go down and confuse the people with different languages. Then they won't be able to understand each other. Again, he uses the term let's. Mm -hmm. Let's. So, this is what happened. This is in reference to the Tower of Babel. Yes. So the same thing happens in the Tower of Babel, right? God visits the city and says, I want to see this for myself. I'm, I'm going to leave my throne to see this wow, for myself. Wow, wow. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we find out from a previous chapter, God, God ranks or his uh, judgment is based on what... Um, he says that he made one statement about the, I believe it was the Am Amorites, right? And he says, he says, uh, he says, um, you're in their land, but I'm not giving it to you yet because their sins are not full yet. So it's almost as if we have a capacity of sin where God says, I'm trying not to judge this. I'm trying to give you guys space to get this right. I'm trying, I'm trying to give you space to get this right. He says, but eventually it's going to get to a capacity at which I have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he says, listen, what's going on here is so bad. I have to visit for myself. I have to see for myself. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Because I've heard. Because the Bible says that God has angels and he has what's called watchers. There's a type of angel that is talked about in the book of Daniel that watch and record and report to right, God right. what they see. Even though God sees everything, he still has people <laughs> working in all of these. Yeah, yeah. He says, I want to see it for myself. Um, let's go back. <clears throat> now, the other thing we see is that he said... In um, verse 20, he says that the other... Uh, no, no, no. That's 21. That's 21. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm going to read it. So the Lord told Abraham, I have heard a great outcry from Sodom and Gomorrah because their sin is so flagrant. Mm -hmm. Right? And we'll get into to that when we get into chapter 19. If we can. We probably won't tonight. Um, hey, we, we take it the way the Lord um, gives it. Right? Amen. Uh, verse 20, 20, 22, All right, 21 says, I am going down to see if their actions are as wicked as I have heard. If not, I want to know. Think about that. God tells Abraham, I want to see if their actions are as bad as what the angels have reported to me. Mm. Mm. Verse 22, the other men turned and headed towards Sodom. So he's so one person is left, the other men head towards Sodom, but the Lord remained with Abraham. And Abraham approached him and said, will you sweep away both the righteous and the wicked? Suppose you find 50 righteous people living in the city. Sit them on them. Oh, I need that. There you go. Suppose you find... Suppose you find 50 righteous people living in the city, living there in the city. Will you sweep, will you still sweep it away and not spare it for their sakes? Surely you wouldn't do such a thing, destroying the righteous along with the wicked. Why? You would be creating, um, you'll be treating the righteous and the wicked exactly the same. Surely you wouldn't do that. Should not the judge of all the earth do what is right? And the Lord replied, if I find 50 righteous people in Sodom, I will spare the entire city for their sakes. Mm -hmm. Think about the power of the righteous. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So we talked about this. I'm going to go a little bit deep into this um, and take a little bit um, to expound on this. 
this is another point that we can we will reintroduce a a technique in theology referred to as the law of first mention. Now, the law of first mention is a principle or rule. Um, it um, the law or principle or rule of first mention is a guideline that some people use for studying scriptures. The law of first mention says that to understand a particular word or doctrine, we must find the first place in scripture that the word or doctrine is revealed and study this passage. Now, this, I'm telling you, this teaching is really, really good. If somebody's interested in going to seminary, because this is some, this is this is this is some stuff that is the basis of how you understand how to break down and understand the scripture. All right? All right, let me read it again. The law or principle or rule of first mention is a guideline that some people use for studying scripture. The law of first mention says that to understand a particular word or doctrine, we must find the first place in scripture that that word or doctrine is revealed and study this passage. Now, the reasoning is that the Bible's first mention of a concept is the simplest and clearest presentation. Doctrines are then more fully developed on that foundation. So to fully understand an important and complex theological concept, Bible students are advised to start with its first mention. Mm -hmm. All right? Here we find God's view on how he judges the earth. Wow. We see in Genesis, in the early part of Genesis, when he destroys the earth with a flood, we, it's one-sided. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Here, Abraham negotiates with God. Mm -hmm. And we learn the not only the power of the righteous, meaning God has called you the salt of the earth, meaning that you preserve the earth. You, 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 you're keeping the earth from being judged. Yes. 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 This also sets up Part of the theory when we talk about how that, uh, when we talk about the rapture, right? God, how God views his children going or participating in judgment, right? Mm -hmm. So in, on, in the first judgment we see was what? No. Uh, when we talk about the righteous, so I'm not talking about Adam, Eve. In the first judgment we see with Noah. What did God do? He was bringing judgment and he saved those that he conceived deemed righteous, Noah and his family. Yeah. Correct? Right. He preserved them. And, and it was really Noah, and the people who were attached to Noah were blessed because of Noah. Right. Yeah. Right. And this is another reason why we, we must stay strong in the faith, because our children are, the Bible says, are sanctified. Now, they do have to develop their own relationship with Christ, but they are set apart. God looks, will look out for them yes. because of their attachment to you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay? So, the same here. So, but this is the first time where we see God go back and forth, and we find out how God judges. Mm -hmm. Right? We knew that he, he saved um, Adam and Eve. With that judgment, right. he went in there and stepped in and, and, and figured out a way to save them from death. He then, when he brings judgment through Noah's ark, you know, with the flood, what does he do? He sets the people, the righteous apart. So this is what we use to support um, when we talk about whether it is the, the, uh, rapture. the rapture. When we talk about the rapture of the church. That based on these principles that, that we learn in scripture, that God delivers his people when it comes to judgment. And we're going to see that even more clearly in chapter 19. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, now, real quick, here we find God's view on how he judges and how he hears. Now, it is funny that this particular, not funny, but it's interesting that this particular um, uh, uh, judgment is the seventh judgment in Genesis, hmm. right? And this is if you break down each, each person. So Adam is judged first, then Eve, then the serpent, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then God judges Cain. Mm -hmm. Then God judges mankind with the flood. Number six, then God judges Egypt for taking Sarah. Sarah. Right. Mm. right. 
And then seven, God judges Sodom and Gomorrah for their wickedness. Mm -hmm. Verse 27. Then Abram, Abraham spoke again. Since I have begun, let me speak further to my Lord, even though I am but dust and ashes. Now he asked God, he said, God, if there's 50 righteous people mm -hmm. in, in two cities, yes. that means 25 in each city, or 10 in one city and 40 in the other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then Abraham's like, well, I do know how Sodom and Gomorrah get down. <laughs> so let me check this again. Since I've begun, let me speak further to my Lord, even though I am but dust and ashes. Notice how he humbles himself, how he refers himself. When we talk to God, see, this is one of the reasons why we got to be careful about being so cavalier with God. Because if you lose, if you lose reverence for God, if you lose the fact that he is God, he sits on the earth, that, that in heaven, angels cry out, holy, 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 all day long. Right, yes. day and night. That as soon as the, the, the 24 elders threw their crowns down before God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this is why we got to be careful about being so cavalier with God. Abraham knows that, and he talks to him like he knows that. He said, God, I'm, even though I'm just dust and ashes, mm -hmm. I'm just, just let me ask this one more thing. Verse 28, suppose there are only 45 righteous people rather than 50. Mm -hmm. Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five? And the Lord said, I will not destroy it if, there, if I find 45 righteous people there. Now, I, I, I got to go into this. Um, again, our Bible says it's going to be just a, a, a little longer than planned. But let's just go into this. What do you think is the significance of Abraham starting at the number 50? Hmm. If, you, if you have an answer to it, put it in the chat. Come on now. <laughs> Come on, Bible scholars. Let me help you out. The number 50 in the Bible often represents or symbolizes deliverance or freedom mm -hmm. from a burden. Think about this. God commanded ancient Israel that every 50 years on the Day of Atonement, that a jubilee was to be declared with the sound of a trumpet. That's Leviticus chapter 25. During the ju jubilee year, all debts were supposed to be settled in favor of the debtor. Wow. Mm. wow. And all inheritance, all inheritances that were taken away to, to hold up a debt, to cover a debt, were supposed to be returned. Wow. Right? Also, those who worked as slave laborers in order to repay debt were granted the freedom to return home to their families and land. When God created the ark, he, told, he instructed Noah to make it 50 cubits deep. The word Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came, right, which is the day of Pentecost. The word Pentecost means the day of 50, meaning represents 50 days after the Passover. When, when God's spirit or deliverance for the church came. Wow. So there's a, reason why, why, there's a reason why God intentionally, God is the one who is architecting, ar, who is <laughs> architecting? There you go. <laughs> Abram's words. Wow. Abraham don't even know, like he don't know the full extent to how God is going to use 50, 154 times throughout the Bible. All right, verse 29. Then Abraham pressed his request further. Suppose there are only 40. And the Lord replied, I will not destroy it for the sake of the 40. Please don't be angry, my Lord, Abraham pleaded. Let me speak. Suppose only 30 righteous people are found. And the Lord replied, I will not destroy it if I find 30. Somebody read um, 31 through 33. Then Abraham said, since I have dared to speak to the Lord, let me continue. Suppose there are only 20. And the Lord replied, then I will not destroy it for the sake of the 20. Finally, Abraham said, Lord, please don't be angry with me if I speak one more time. Suppose only 10 are found there. And the Lord replied, then I will not destroy it for the sake of the 10. I pause. Mm -hmm. For the sake of the 10. Mm -hmm. 
Well, go ahead, finish the verse, and then I'll come back to that. When the Lord had finished his conversation with Abraham, he went on his way, and Abraham returned to his tent. Now, notice, and again, we are not going to have the time to go into chapter 19, right? Um, but God goes his way, but he does not go to Sodom and Gomorrah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because he uses these angels as his eyes. Wow. Mm. Now, why did I want to pause when we when when Abraham stopped at ten? So I asked you the question: What's the significance of the three, right? Mm -hmm. And I asked you the significance of the fifty. He started at fifty. He ends at ten. What is the significance of ten? Mm -hmm. When you think of ten, what what comes to your mind? I think of the tithe. You think of the tithe? Yes, that's that's an excellent one. Give give me something else. When you think of the ten, when you think of ten in the Bible, what? Come to your mind. What Type it in the, the chat if you got it. What about the lepers? The ten lepers. That's another one. I got that written down. Any other tens? Any other tens? How about the ten virgins? Oh, yes. yes. The wedding, yes. The ten virgins. Yeah. How about the ten commandments? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> all over those. <laughs> I think they're so plain. Yeah. <laughs> um, did, did, did you know that the Passover lamb was selected was selected day 10 of the first month of the year. Oh, wow. The last kingdoms before God's return is, is pictured as 10 kingdoms or 10 toes in Daniel. Mm. 10 kingdoms in yes. Revelation, 10 toes yes. in Daniel. Uh -huh. <clears throat> um, 10 can represent completeness, but this is, this is really what 10 is representing. If you think about all of those 10s that we just mentioned, 10 represents... Man's responsibility or what we owe to God. Wow. 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 That's good. That's good. Remember, the, the bridegroom comes back to the ten virgins, and he's, he's expecting them to have what? Oil. 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 The, 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 Lord, the Lord Jesus heals ten lepers, and he's expecting them to come back to give him what? Glory, worship, worship. Glory, honor, glory, honor yes. worship. Yes. God gave Ten Commandments because He's expecting us to give Him back service and 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 to to to, to adhere. Yes. Right. The tithe represents God's what we owe to God. Mm -hmm. Yes. It represents God cashing in. Yes, yes. <clears throat> um, I just thought that was an interesting point. It is. Talk about it. What about it? You can, what, what's your thoughts? Yeah. Elder Ratha, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Sister, um, uh, um, uh, all of those watching, praise the Lord. Um, well, real, real quick, I was just thinking about when Abraham, you know, his last request is that it's, now I don't know if Abraham stopped at that point or if God stopped Abraham at that point. You know, like God left before Abraham could ask him something else. Or if, if Abraham was like, all right, I can't, <laughs> if it's not 10 and 2, he cities, said, then y'all probably need to go. <laughs> he said, if it ain't five, it ain't five per city. <laughs> Elder Ratha just put down That's another cool. one. Ten plagues God oh, sent to yes. Egypt. God, absolutely. this is what Egypt owes God. Yes, yes. I want my people back. Yes, yes. You took my babies, I'm going to take yours. Wow, wow. Mm -hmm. Let my people go. Yeah. Ten represents what we owe to God. Mm -hmm. It represents, um, you know, God saying, uh, that, that's, that's my share. Yeah. That's my share. Right? This is why Abraham, before there was even a law, said, God, here's 10%. Mm -hmm. And we got to understand we give a waiter more. Is a waiter 
a waiter on the on your receipt, a waiter's new their gratuity is now they say 17%. They say for great for good service, 17%, 18% for medi- you know, medium service, right? Mm-hmm. And then they go like for spectacular service, 20 they actually put that on the receipt sometimes, 20%. Yes, they do. That's double what we are what God says, hey, listen, the tithe is mine. Yeah. And again, we talk about the tithe by faith, right? The tithe should be a should be a uh, a, a starting place for how we give, yeah. right? Uh, you know, what in, in in this ministry we talk about the spirit of generosity, about uh, listening to the voice of God, because you got to graduate. See, we're supposed to graduate from the tithe. The tithe should be like this, how, like that should be like out the gate. We're supposed to graduate to be like God. What you want me to give today? Yeah, yeah. See, that's how you live by faith. See, once you get accustomed to giving the tithe, it's no longer faith. Mm-hmm. It's faith when you say, God, what you want me to give today? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, what else we got? Uh, Elder Rafe, that was a good one. I totally forgot about the ten plagues. Yeah. Um, how about this? Some, some of you probably would be surprised at this. You know, God says, God said ten times in Genesis chapter one. And God said, let there be light. And God said, they be this. There are ten times. Ten. Wow. Yes. So, there is significance to the number ten. Yes. Significance to the number ten. What is God saying? God saying, this is what, when, when I come back for mine. Mm-hmm. My oil. My praise. Ten lepers. Yeah. And only ten percent of them came back. Right. Wow. Come on now. Hmm. Go ahead. I see something. I see the the Spirit of God percolating on you. (laughs) I was going to jump to something else, though. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, Just how it says, when the Lord had finished his conversation with Abraham. Right. (laughs) Right. And in the uh, King James, it says, and the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communing with Abraham. And Abraham returned into his place. So just, you know, it's like God was done. <laughs> as soon as he was finished with the conversation, it was over. <laughs> now, thank you so much for that. I want you to know, for those, again, I'm speaking to all, each and every one of you watching are are uh, if you if you aren't official Bible scholars, I'm speaking Bible scholar all the way. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, I want you to understand that. Remember, we talked about the law of first. What is it? The law of first. What? Mention. The law of first mention. This right here account that we see here is the first mention of intercessory prayer. Wow. Mm. That's good. Wow. Come on. Come on. Come on, cuz. Right? <laughs> um, praise the Lord, uh, Sister Sherry. Cause, <laughs> right? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. She says, amen, tenfold. That's right. Yes. That's right. Think about this. This is the law first mentioned. So what are we establishing here? This is, this is the format for how we intercede. So this is for you prayer warriors out there. Come on. For the Come prayer on. warriors, the Bible says many times our prayers are not answered because we pray amiss. That means we don't know what we're doing and we don't know what we're saying. So Abraham, in the law of first mention, sets the standard and the protocol yeah. for how we are to pray. And he says that there should be a negotiation with God, but you don't negotiate like you negotiate with a car salesman. You negotiate like you're negotiating with a king. Come on now. Yes. Yes. So, so Abraham's prayer and his communion with God saved his family. Yes. Yeah. Now, we got to understand, here is the amazing thing. The first time we find this in chapter 13 or 14, when Abraham gets in trouble, Abraham, uh, when Lot gets in trouble the first time, Abraham gets on his donkey and he takes his men and they go fight the battle. Yeah. By this age, Abraham knows and he learns, he says, the battle is yeah, not mine. mine, it's the Lord. That's right. Come on. That's right. Come on. I can't keep on jumping in there and saving these kids every time they get messed up. I need to pray. Yes. Go ahead. But 
isn't it also interesting that Abraham doesn't mention Lot to God? Wow. Like, he does not mention, <laughs> but what about my nephew? I, I think, think it's like, you know, <laughs> like, dude, I don't even know if you're righteous. Exactly. Like, you know, you're living there. You yes. Know? Yes. Listen, that's some real, real it talk. Is, it is real. Yes. yes. Knowing that someone is, because they know his nephew, they deserving of what is coming. You know, Abraham told him to leave yes. the first time. Yeah. Right. And some of us as so parents, right listen, listen, when as a parent, you know, we we wrote a song. My sister uh, Faith and myself, we wrote a song years ago for one of the plays that we did, and it was called "Let Let Him Go." Yeah. Let Let It Go. Right? And the words went, let it go. Let him go. Uh, let him go. No, let it go. Let... For, for God can't take what I won't give. Yeah. Right? And so what happens is we constantly jump in there to, be, to, to play Superman and play Savior. And when we play Savior, what happens is God says, I can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we need to take our battle to the throne room. Yes. Yes. We need to take our battle to the throne room. Mm-hmm. We need to, you know, the Bible says, uh, uh, you know, um, pulling down strongholds. Yes. yes. For yes. we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That's right. See, That's right. see, in, in the earlier chapter, Abraham went to wrestle against flesh and blood. Uh -huh. By this chapter, he has grown in faith because he's stuck with the word and he's continued to commune with God. So now he learns his lesson and says, let me just have a conversation with God. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me just have a conversation with God. Yeah. Elder Ritz said ten, 10 fingers and 10 toes. What does that mean? That's hands to grip. Mm -hmm. God says, I want mine. Yeah. Wow. I want mine. I want mine. Not that I need it. This is the thing. God says you need it. Wow. Yes, exactly. Listen, you need it. Yes. I don't even know why we're going this route. When, when we talk about that 10, let me pa pause there for that 10. Mm -hmm. God says, you need to give it away. Yes. Yeah. You need to let that go. Yes. Yeah. I don't need it. You need it. Yes. You need to release it for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Some of us, we, we struggle with that concept of giving. And again, we talk about this. Listen, we, we don't, we're, we're not pushing down the, the throat or, uh, about uh, the legalism of it. We're saying the principle of the tithe is, God, I'm recognizing you with my, with, 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 with my first. Yes. Abraham said, honey, get the best flower. Yeah. Get the best flower. So, so, so uh, again, he's interceding on behalf of two nations that he don't even like. Right. <laughs> How about that? Come on. And we got to learn how to wrestle not against flesh and blood. Come on, come on. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, authorities yeah. in high places. Yeah. Yeah. The thing, you know, some of us are, are, are been praying for our children, have been trying to get them in rehab, and, and we got to understand that, that, that it's, the, it's the blood of Jesus and the power of God that can release them from the struggle and the stronghold of the drug addiction. Yeah. Yes. 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 And you've got to put that thing in God's hands. Yes. 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 They're in lifestyles that you know are not pleasing to God, and you've got to put that thing in God's hands. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. But you got to be praying, God, I need you to release them from this thing. God, I need you to release them with this thing. Yeah. He said, if you, he said, the, 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 uh, the prayers of the righteous, That's right. the fervent, that means fiery. That means, that, that means the, the, the fire, the heated, yeah. the intense yeah. prayers of the righteous availeth much. Yes, yes. yes. Mm. This is the first, this is the SOP. That is standard operating procedure for how to intercede. Come on mm. now. Mm. When the last time you negotiated with God? <laughs> so now I can go to God and say, but God, you said that, you said um, train a child up in the way that they should go, and when they are old, they shall not depart from it. So I need to keep on quoting that, and I need to keep on standing that. And when I go in my prayer and I keep on declaring that, God, you said they weren't going to depart from it. I don't care if they are if they're in a drug house. God, He said they're coming back. That's 
They're coming back. They're coming back in Jesus' name. I don't care if they're in a immoral lifestyle. That's right. mm-hmm. They're coming back in Jesus' Come on, name. Yes. Come on. yes. Break every chain. That's right. Break every chain. Amen. Break every chain. Yes. God says, I'll do it. But you got you gotta get, you gotta commune with me. Mm-hmm. Where, where, have you built a memorial unto me? Hmm. This is a simple way to do it. It's just a quick application. Take a shoebox. I want you to find a shoebox. And the ladies, I know it's ladies watching. Ladies, I know you got shoeboxes. <laughs> right? Take a shoebox. What I want you to do, I want you to build this. I want you to call it a first aid kit. Right? And what you're going to do is you're going to put inside this first aid kit, you're going to find a scripture, or you're going to find a scripture, your favorite scripture, and you're going to write it down in there. That scripture that encourages you. And, you know, for some of those, some of us that still use CDs, I still use them if I, you know, when, you know if my, you know, my CD player is on his last leg. But, listen, if you got a CD, <laughs> put your favorite CD on there. You know, like, I, my, one of my favorites is Marvin Sapps. I never would have made it. Yeah. Never would have made it. I, listen, and, and, and even if it's just as a reminder, you don't have to be playing that. You can go and say, okay, I need to find Never would have made it. I'm going to put it up on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Never would have made it. I want you to put your, your, your scripture. I want you to put, I want you to write down the list of five things that God has done for you. Yes. Five deliverances that God has done for you. Right? I want you to write it down. So when you go through hard times and struggles in your faith, you're going to open up your first aid kit. Right? When you feel wounded from the darts of the enemy, the fiery darts of the enemy yeah. shooting into your shield and you feel like your shield is being burnt up, you're going to look into this first aid kit. You're going to open it up. You're going to say, okay, God. God, you healed me. I had a cancer diagnosis, and God, you healed me. You brought me through that yes. thing, God. In yes. Jesus' name. Yes. You're going to look at those scriptures. You're going to see Psalm 91. I'm not just, you know, like this. He said, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And you're going to declare, God, you said, he's, God, you said this. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. You said this. On those days when you don't want to go to church, because everything is telling you the church is wrong, yes. and this stuff don't work, uh-huh. and God is saying, "No, I need you to get your first aid kit. You've been wounded. You've been wounded, and I need you to, I need you to clean that up." Yeah. Yes. This is going to act as a memorial. You don't need, you don't need a whole altar. Yeah. Build a, get a shoebox. Yes. Mm-hmm. And every time you walk by that shoebox. And you can write your, just be creative with it. You know, we all love crafts. Do something crafty with it. But put something, put those things in there that are going to encourage you when when you're feeling down in your faith. Mm -hmm. Put those things inside. So when you're feeling down in your faith, just like Abraham, listen, Abraham had struggles just like the rest of us. Yes. Abraham doubted just like the rest. He laughed in his head when God told him he was about to do something great. He laughed. He said, how can that be me, God? But he was close to his memorial. Mm. So every day, take a scripture, paste it on your bathroom mirror. You're praying for healing. Take a scripture, post it on your bathroom mirror. So every day you come into your bathroom, you definitely go into the bathroom every day. And some of us, three, four, five, and if you go to McDonald's, definitely go into the bathroom. <laughs> Once you turn 25, McDonald's is not your friend. It's not a Happy Meal no more. It's an unhappy meal. (laughs) Tell the truth. Shame the devil. Burger King be right next to him, too. Get you running. You you used to wonder why your parents would run so fast. (laughs) Let me sorry. I apologize, y'all. I know we're in the spirit, but hallelujah. But you need a memorial. Build a a memorial unto the Lord. God, I want you. God, I want to be close to you. I want to commune with you, God. I want to know you like I never knew you before, God. I want, God says, if you draw close to me, I'll draw close to you. Yes, yes. He said, you'll get so close to me that you're under my shadow. You're so close to me that that, that my shadow is falling over top of you. That's how close I want you to be. That's how close I want you to be. And God says, just just come close. He says, if you come close, I'm going to come close. If you come close, I'm going to come close. 
Mm. Praise the Lord, Sister Adana. Praise the Lord. And listen, they got an amazing church. I got to say that. The Action City Church, right? Uh -huh. Action City Perry Church Hall. in Perry Hall. Look, they are a true blessing. True blessing. We went out and visited that amazing church as well. Um, true blessing to the Lord. And they're doing wonderful work out there. Um, Pastor, uh, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll get that. I'll get that. But, um, but definitely doing amazing work unto the Lord. Um, but, uh, but, but again, this is kingdom building. Absolutely. We're building kingdom. This is not competing. Correct. We're building kingdom. Correct. Right? Yes. You know, um, Pastor Angela from uh, Just the Word Church. Yeah. Uh, she come. They come out. And they. They. You know, we Support. work together. We're 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 a, church, a community of churches. Community yes. of churches. Yes. So praise the Lord. Amen. 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 So um. So we. So uh. But well, whoa, we went way 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 over our time. Praise the Lord. <laughs> um. So uh, before we close out, hallelujah, God, we thank you. Before we close out, we don't want to take this time for granted. And I'm going to ask that those that are watching, please don't tune out right now because I need you to tune into God and pray and intercede. Maybe, the, maybe, your, maybe your family is secure in the Lord, but, you know, there's other people who need their, their, their loved ones. They're praying for their loved ones to come to the Lord. Mm -hmm. So right now, even in this atmosphere, begin to intercede just yes. like Abraham did. Yes. God, begin to think of somebody else. Mm -hmm. intercede just like Abraham did begin to pray pray with me right now in Jesus name father if there's any out there that are in need of you they need a relationship with you God they need they need deliverance God in Jesus name there it's there are folks out there that are struggling with um, uh, cocaine and crack and uh, heroin addiction and father in the name of Jesus we bind that spirit of addiction Jesus, in Jesus, Jesus name everybody thinks that you got it going on but you've been struggling in Jesus name and that demonic spirit that demonic spirit be loosed in Jesus name Jesus. Yes, in the name of Jesus you will trouble them no more. Just raise your hands and receive. Begin to thank yes, God. Just begin yes, to thank yes, God. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. Thanking God. We thank God. He said, We thank God in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We declare the power and the glory of God in the highest. In the land of the living. You, if you don't know Jesus Christ in the pardon of your sins, and you say, If I if, if I die today, I don't know where if heaven would be my home. You need to say this prayer and you need to say it right now. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Yes, Lord. I, I believe that I'm a sinner. I confess that I'm a sinner. God, and I'm in need of a Savior. I believe, God, that you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross for my sins. God, but he died and, but he rose from the grave in three days with all power and authority in his hands. And he's able to save my soul. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Change my heart. Change my life. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Turn my wrongs into right, God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We pray, Lord God, we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest, in Jesus' name. Glory, glory, glory. If maybe you're in need of prayer, you're looking for healing, you've been in need of prayer for healing, right where you are, uh, as long as you're not driving, I want you to raise your hands. I want you to raise the one hand the, on your right hand. I want you to put it in the area of the pain. Maybe there's sickness in your body, and you've been praying to God for deliverance in Jesus' name. God is still a deliverer. In Jesus' name, we pray, and we speak the healing, manifest power of God in Jesus' name. The Holy Ghost is even moving through these waves, these 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 uh, these streaming waves in Jesus' name, healing, healing, healing to your back in Jesus' name, spinal alignment. Yes, you've been thinking about or talking, been in talks about getting uh, a surgery on your back. God is healing you in Jesus' name. Yes, God. Yes, God. You move mountains. You cause walls to fall. With your power. Perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible. Now we're standing here only because you made a way. 
you made a way. Father, in Jesus' name, I'm speaking yes, to that sciatic yes. nerve. In Jesus' name, you, it's been hard for you to even work out. It's been hard for you to move. It, even sitting was, has been hard for you. You've been, you've been crying at night. It's kept you from sleeping. God is bringing healing in Jesus', Jesus name to that nerve. Jesus, Jesus. In Jesus', Jesus name. God. Glory to God in the highest. Yes, Lord. Glory to God in the highest. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We give you glory, honor, and praise. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. And listen, um, saints of God, if you prayed any of those prayers, if you prayed the prayer and you accepted Jesus Christ into your life, look, we are so excited. Heaven is so excited. The angels yes. of God are celebrating right yes. now. But what you need to do is you need to find a Bible-believing church. I'm going to invite you to listen um, um, to, to be a part of this ministry. Um, if, you, if you like, you can just type... Uh, uh, join in the chat and one of our leaders will reach out to you and, and walk you through that. So we want to give you, um, we just want to um, put you in the right place where you can grow in the things of God. Yes. And again, listen, there are many churches out there. We just talked about one. Um, um, and so again, we're going to put you in the direction or put you in the best place that you can grow. So we're going to help you with that. So um, um, in the name of Jesus. Now, Lastly, before we close out this word, um, we're going to uh, say uh, give folks an opportunity to give. Listen, you can sow into this ministry. In the chat, there should be, um, praise the Lord, thank you so much, Sister Adana. Um, um, uh, Pastor Adana, Lady Adana, we got Lady Adana, sorry, First Lady, uh, <laughs> praise the Lord. Um, but yeah, uh, in, the, in the chat, you'll see some links where you can um, sow. Now you can go to our website, but that link, this, it should say PayPal in it. You can just click straight on that link. It'll take you straight to the method for you to give. Um, also, we have um, Cash App. You can sow through Cash App. And our Cash App dollar sign is, is dollar sign Psalm 91, Psalm P-S-A-L-M 91 Ministries, right? Um, so dollar sign Psalm 91. So the, the link should be there as well. Or the, the, the dollar sign, the cash tag, that's what they call it. So you can sow into the ministry. I want to encourage you to do so. I want to encourage you to do so. Um, the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. When you sow unto others, God blesses it back. And you cannot yes, out-give yes. God. Yes. And so we want to thank you for all of those that are kingdom building, praise God, that are looking to um, help advance the kingdom, whether it's here in this location or another branch of Zion. So with that being said, we're going to thank you so much. We do have service. We're going to invite you all out to our Sunday morning service. Amen. Hallelujah. We got some special news of some things that we're going to be doing. So we want you to join us on Sunday yes. at uh, 9 a.m. Doors open at 8.30. We do intercessory prayer. So we want to thank you for joining us. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We love you. you in the love of the Lord. If you pray the prayer of salvation, type in salvation, and one of our leaders will reach out to you. Praise God. Amen, amen.